Hi guys, this is Vishal here from Trapco. So in this video, we will understand how to implement login and sign up using Xano. So here we are creating a web application where we are using Xano as a backend framework and we are using uh, Trapco to build the UI. So we have implemented like fetching of data, creation of new records, addition, deletion, pagination, download of CHP, a lot of things. Like So we are doing a, a deep integration with Xano where we are implementing all the use cases to build a full-fledged web application on draft code and using Xeno as a backend. Right, so we also already have uh, several like collections uh, where we are fetching data. Now here we are we want to implement login and sign up. So Xeno is a backend platform which gives uh, like database as a service or a backend as a service, and you make REST API code to interact with the data. So we already have a database which has address and person as a field uh, which we created. And then role and user are the like uh, the default tables provided by Xeno. So now what I want to do, I want to create a new user, and then the user data will persist on Xeno, and we will log in and sign up with that user, right? So let's see how that can be done. So I'll go to Trap Code. So as of now, we have previously implemented a list page, person list, create, edit, delete, model pop-up, and all those things. Now let's implement the sign up flow. So first we'll sign up a user. The user should get reflected in Xeno. Then we'll log in with that user. Okay. So as of now, if you uh, come here, so basically we have a field called role. So we decide that what all roles are there on the platform and how they access the pages, right? So that is something which gets stored, but that's the only thing which gets stored, which is more like a part of configuration. So as of now, we have a role called user. Okay, let's change it to, let's say person. Okay, so I have only one role, which is called person. We can have multiple roles and they can log in and on the basis of who they are, they will be redirected to their respective dashboard. So now let's see how we can implement the sign up flow first. So for that, I'll go to the Xeno API documentation. So you can go from here. So here there are several APIs. So I'll go to the default one. Look in here. So these are the APIs for the tables which were created. We are more interested in this auth one, right? So which auth is a sign up, login and authenticate user on the basis of access token. So sign up API we will use to create a user so that the user gets signed up. After that, we'll use login and auth API to basically log in uh, the user so that we'll be able to identify who the user is and log in them on track code, right? So let's see how that can be done. So first we'll need the auth sign up API, right? So if I go to the Swagger documentation, so you can go to the documentation from here or from here, we are already on the documentation. So here it is, right? So here are several APIs which are available. Okay, so these are the auth APIs. So now first we'll need this sign up API. So I'll just expand this. Okay, so I've already uh, doing some testing. So I've created it, but yeah. So let's say I try to execute API and it says, okay, so it gives me the access token of this particular user. So now we'll replicate the same flow where we will give the username and password and maybe other fields and it creates a user on Xeno. Okay, so let's see whether this user got created because I did one uh, sample API call. So yes, it got created. Okay, so now we need to replicate the same flow on trap code. So what I'll do, I'll create a signup form and maybe we'll accept these three fields, like what this uh, is expecting, name, email, and password. If needed, you can go and create more fields, but as of now, the, the user collection, which is there in Xeno is name, email, and password. So we'll use these three fields only. Okay, so I'll go to my collection. Okay, and then I'll go to my user and then add one more field, which is for name. Okay, so we have username, role, created it. Let's configure it. So username, I'll just change to email. Okay, just to make it similar. Why we are doing it? Because we, we just want to create a collection form which should look uh, like a, a form which Xeno is expecting. Okay, you can use a regular form, but then you will have to create or add each input one by one. When you already have a structure of user collection, you can just generate the whole form in a single click. Okay, so that's the only reason. So I go add a page. So I will say, sign up via Xeno. Okay, so I'll create a page. Just need a blank page. 
Now what I'll do, I'll just drop a collection form. Okay. So I go to my components, drop a section and let's drop a, a three column layout and let's drop a collection form, which is user, right? So the form has uh, email. Okay, let me just increase the width. So email, password, role we don't need. I'll just remove and name. Let's move towards the top. Okay, so name, email, password. So now what we'll do, we'll just submit this form and the user should get created on Xeno. So that will complete the sign up flow. So what to do it, what we'll need, we'll need to submit the form to Xeno. So for that, let's create an external API. So I'll go here, I'll go to external APIs and let's create one external API. So external API is a model which basically uh, creates REST API. So we have already uh, created all these APIs previously where we are fetching data, updating, deletion, creation and all those things. So now let's go and create an external API. Here what we'll say, uh, sign up user on Xeno. Okay, so now let's go and see what this is expecting. So this is the URL and the request parameter are name, email and password. Okay, so in everything is a small letter. So let's go, I'll say the URL. Headers, I don't think we, they're expecting anything explicitly. Content type, we anyway send, so we can just escape it. So now we need to pass these parameters in the body, name, email, password. Okay, so I'll say non persistence collection. Why? Because the data which is coming from the form will get passed as it is without getting persisted, right? So what we are saying, whatever the data is coming from the form which we created, so this form, just send it to Zen. Okay, don't persist it. But we need to access these values, name, email, and password. So this will basically get binded to the user collection because we have binded it to the form so that we can access it while sending the data to uh, Zen. So that you don't have to work with or play with JSON. So I'll say name, which is it expected with the name, name. Then email, which is email. And password is something, which is password. Or we can just copy the names from here. Name, email, and password. Okay. That's all. So this external API is complete. We are saying send the data to Zeno. And these are the parameters which pick from the form and send to Zeno. That's all. And I'll just say save. We don't want to process anything because we are not doing anything after that. So now let's go and create an event. So in the event, what we'll say, uh, let's say sign up with Xeno. So what we will say, just send this data to Xeno. So I'll go to my external API and just send data to external API. The external API is sign up user on Xeno. Okay. Uh, and just show, show me the success message once it is successful. Save. So this is done. Maybe after sign up, we can redirect the user to a home page or to a login page, but that we'll see later. Or maybe we'll just take them to hmm, some page. So let's say navigation, page redirect, take them to a person list page, let's say. Okay. So this is a very simple example. Now I'll go back to my page and bind this event, right? So that the event gets triggered. It will first make a call to Xeno, create the user, and then send us to the person list page. Okay. So I'll go to the collection form, go to the settings. And here I'll just say sign up with Xeno. That's all what we'll do. Now let's go and preview this. So as of now, there are three users, user one, user two, and test, right? Now let's create one more user. So uh, let's say I'll, I'll create a user with my name. So let's say Vishal, Vishal at the rate email.com. And password, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now submit. Right, so we have got this error, which says that input does not meet required length of eight characters, right? So this is the error which is coming from Xeno because we have configured, or I think this is the default configuration with the password has to be more than eight characters. So that means we are able to successfully send data to Xeno 
and the data is getting validated okay so whatever validation you have put on Zeno whether the user is unique or not the name or password are matching the pattern so it is actually getting validated right so this is a good sign so now let's just change put some uh, difficult password okay so I've not submitted it let's just go and see whether the user got created or not so the user not yet got created right now let's submit this to submit so it has now sent the data to Zeno shown me the success message and redirect me to the the person list page so now let's go to Zeno and see whether the user got created or not so I'll just refresh okay so the user is here Vishal email and password so we have now completed the sign up flow a user is getting sign up from draft code and the data is getting captured at Zeno. So a, a new user is created. Now this user can log in and proceed, proceed further. Similarly, you can create user from here and th that person should also be able to log in from draft code. So let's see how that flow works. So now to implement the login, I just change it to sign up form. Okay. Now to implement the login, let's do the same process. Now I need a login form. Before going to login, let's see what all APIs are needed. So I'll go back to Zeno, go to the API. So now we need to use these APIs, login auth. So this will give us access token. And after that, probably we'll try to fetch the information of that particular person and store it in session so that when they are making further requests, we already know who the person is. Right. So I'll we will be basically using these two calls. One is authenticate auth login where we will pass the username and the password which we just created okay and once the person gets authenticated will receive an auth token and we'll use that auth token to get the data of that person so we will be using these two apis for the login flow so let's see how that can be done so i'll go back let's create one more page which is let's say login via zen create so login is expecting two parameters, which is I think email and password. Let's quickly take a look. So login is expecting email and password. So either we can create a collection form or we can create a regular form with just two fields. So hardly makes any difference since we already have a user collection. So my preference is to just use the same collection so that it generates the form automatically for me. So I'll use two column layout. I'll put a collection form say user okay event we'll just create in a while so email and password so these are the two things which the login is expecting so i'll say change it to login okay login via Zeno. now let's go and implement this event i'll say login okay so to do an event as I mentioned, we need to create two APIs. One to send the data to Zeno and authenticate the user, get the access token. And after that, we will basically need the details of the user so that we can create the user in session or we store it at our end so that when the person is going to the dashboard or they are doing further things, we know who the user is. Access token is itself enough to make further API calls to Zeno. But we can just get more data just to see who the user is. Maybe we'll have to print the username somewhere. Maybe we have to display the name of the person or let's say welcome user. So it makes sense to bring the data. It is completely optional. Access token is good enough to continue the whole journey. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll go to the external APIs again. And now we will create two external APIs. One is to do the login, okay, to fetch the access token. Let's do it first. So I'll say, create external API. So this time we'll say verify username and password from Zeno. Okay. So first we'll just verify username and password and get the data. Okay. So the API is this. Uh, so this is the URL. Let me try to execute. Okay. So this is the URL. You can also get the URL from here. So don't worry about it. So you can copy it from here endpoint. Okay. So I'll go back, paste it. So this is a, a post call, which is fine. 
disrespecting email and password. So this is the data which is coming from my login form. So I'll go back here. Headers, we don't have to pass anything, all these things. We'll say non-persistent collection because the data is coming from a collection form which is not persisting. So I'll say non-persistent collection. And email is coming in the email field. And password is coming in the password field. That's all. So I think this is good to just make a call and get the access token. Okay, so now let's bind this. Let's create an event and bind this and just um, make it work and then we'll continue the remaining journey. So I'll go to my event and let's say add event. I'll say login via Xeno. So very simple event. What we'll say, we'll say just send the data to external API and fetch the access token. So I'll say verify username and password into Xeno and that's all. Uh, these we can save in session. So whatever auth token is we are getting from Xeno. So we will store it in session so that we can further reuse it to make further API calls which are needed to build a, build a full-fledged web application like a SaaS or a multi tenant or any sort of web application where you need the APIs to be authenticated. So you need to pass that auth token with all the API calls so that Xeno returns the data on the basis of who that person is, right? So that is something which is needed. And we're not storing it in the database, we're just persisting it in the browser session so that it can be used in the journey forward. Success message, we'll just leave it as it is and save, okay? So a very simple event where we're just saying send the data to Xeno and verify whether the credentials are valid. If valid, return the access token. I'll go to my page, which is login via Xeno, and just bind this event. So I go to the settings, and here let's bind the event which we just created, which is login via Xeno. Okay, this event will just make a call to Xeno and validate the user, whether the username or password are valid or not, and return the access token, All right? So I open it in preview mode. Okay, just to show you how the data gets stored, I am just doing an inspect element and let's go to the application here. The data gets stored in session. So this is how uh, data works uh, when you store it in browser. So as of now, and there is nothing in local storage as in session. Okay, we'll quickly see how this works. Now let's go and try to log in with the, with the username. Let's first try some dummy uh, login. So let's say Vishal at the rate email.com. So this is our invalid user, right? I'll just say login. So now it will make a call to Xeno and see it is returning invalid credential because the user does not exist. Now let's try with a valid one. We shall. So now this is a valid user. And if you see in the session, there is nothing. I'll say login via Xeno. Now it has made a call and returned the data. So if you go and see in the session, you see this is the response of the API. So we have actually got the access token, which is now getting stored in the browser session. How it is getting stored? Because in the event, we have mentioned that whatever the response comes, store it in the browser session. So here it is, save API response in browser session. Right, and this is same form data in session that whatever we have sent, save in session. But again, all these are optional. But uh, we just want to see how this looks like. So, this is the token which we received. Now, the login functionality is complete. You can proceed from here on only. But let's say I want to fetch the details of the user and store it in session so that we can use it further. Let's say I want to display username somewhere. So, how do I do it? So, let's do it. So, I'll go to my pages. Okay, because as of now, we don't know who the user is. So what I'll do, I'll go to my dashboard page and try to print something from the current logged in user. Okay, or display something from the logged in user. And in the pages, we can also validate whether the person with a valid role should be able to access. So let's say this is my dashboard. Okay, I'll just remove this. And here, let's say, let's apply the validation that access to the person user with a person role. So we rem you remember we created this role person. So I'm saying on the dashboard only allow the person who has the person role, right? And let's display some data. So I'll go in with the heading, let's display something. 
let's say get data from logged in user okay and i'll say name and let's say email okay so now what i'm saying whoever is the logged in display their name and email okay, maybe let's change the color so that it gets differentiated the other users sorry with the other uh, headings or labels okay name and email that's it now let's make one more api call to do that what we'll do we'll go back to external api there we'll just create one more api which is to fetch the data using this access token so now we will be needing the access token which is stored in the browser to be able to uh, go in the external api how we do it let's see so here let's create one more api okay. logged in user data from Zeno and authenticate them okay so this is the api which we are going to call which is authenticate me and the only thing which you need to pass is the access token okay so i just copy the url again don't worry about it you can also copy the url from here also copy endpoint and just paste it here and this is a get call so i'll mark it as get so this is a get call okay now we need to pass the access token so that access token returns the details of the user so i'll say authorization bearer and the token now we don't know what the token is right token is stored in the browser so how do we get it from the browser it's very simple you just copy this variable so this is basically the current session which is the current browser session in the key so we'll quickly see what the key is so i've just copied it here we'll go back to the browser and here you see this is the key auth token right it is stored here so just copy the key which is auth token so i'll just say key is auth token that's all so what it will do it will dynamically pick the value whoever the current logged in user is so let's say you have thousands of users and when they log in each one will have their own access token so there is no global access token each one will log in they have their own access token and whatever further api calls you will make to xeno their access token will go so that even at xeno end you know that what data need to be served to them which definitely we'll cover this in the next videos where we'll create a sas and a multi-tenant sas application using xam okay so i'll say get the data now you need to process the response we have sent the data now the data will come so we'll say process the response and we will do this thing enable login and sign up with the response so now this is something new which we are doing we are saying whatever the response is coming enable the user to log in or sign up using the parameters so whatever data is coming use it to log in the user so this is fine let's see what the data comes as part of response of this particular api Okay, so, so the response is this ID created at name and email. Okay, so these are the parameters which come. Obviously, these are the things which are needed. So I'll just copy these things, name, email, ID, and we'll see how we want to store it at our end. Okay, so field to uniquely identify user is basically email. So each user is a unique email. Email is email, password, nothing, or let's give some dummy password. Okay, why we are doing it? Because uh, we need to create an object of the user so that trap could also identify who the user is okay role just ignore name will give the name which is coming in the name parameter okay that's all and i'll say save setting so what it will do it will fetch the user data from uh, xeno and create a dummy user on trap code so that that user information is available to you across their session or till the time they are logging okay i'll just save so now we in this external api we need uh, the detail of this auth token so we need to pass the auth token from the browser to that external api so let's see how that can be done but the api part is done now let's go and modify the event so i'll go to my event and go to login with Zeno and let's modify it so first we have made a call so you remember i said that we will need to make two calls one is to authenticate the user get the access token and second call is to use that access token to fetch the data of the user so i'll say make another call same external api but this time we'll call authorize 
using external API. So this is a bit different type of external API where you basically control that when the user comes, what role you want to give to them, where you want to redirect to them, if the login is successful or if we are getting a valid data. Because as of now, we don't know whether the valid to, uh, the auth token is valid or not. If it is valid, what exactly you want to do? Similar to a login mechanism, when the username and password are valid, what exactly you want to do? So I'll say, make this API call and when the data returns, give them a person role, right? We want to give whoever the person is logged in from Zeno, we want to give them a person role. Now you need to send the values of that browser to the external API. And you remember, this is the auth token. This is the value which is stored here. We need to pass this value from browser to the API. So we need to give this variable. If you want to pass multiple values, you can just do as a comma separated. Okay, as of now, we just need one. So I'll just keep it here. Once this our login successful, once, once the data is received, how do we want to proceed? We'll say if they are successful, if we are getting the username and password, take them to the dashboard. Okay, and let's say a map success message which is login success again these are optional if you want to save what data is coming you want to save what we are sending or you can just ignore leave it okay i'll just say save so this completes my second flow where you basically fetch the data from an external api from Zeno, validate it and then log in the user now let's try the api again so i'll just reload i'll just clean this Okay, because uh, we are logging again. Now I'll just reload the page. Now this time it should do make two calls. One is it will authenticate the credentials. If they are authenticated, it will redirect the person to the dashboard and give the person a user role and display the data of the person which we have given in the dashboard in two boxes. Okay, so let's give the username. Let's first try some dummy password. Invalid credentials. Now try the valid password. Okay, so as of now, there is nothing in the session in the local storage. It's a login via Zeno. So it has made a call and login is success. And this is the information of the user who is logged in, right? And if you go and see in the browser, it has actually brought the information. So this is the form data which has submitted. We have saved it. Try not to save it. Otherwise, the password will get exposed, but that is fine. Okay. This is good when you are debugging. So this is the auth token and this is the information of the user. Now this user is logged in, right? So this basically enables you to log in and sign up using Xeno. Let's say we have new data, new user getting created on Xeno. They are not signing up explicitly on Drapport and how they log in. So that is also easy. So I'll just log out. Let me create one more user on Xeno. Uh, so let's say the data got created from somewhere or maybe from some other system which is also using Xeno as a backend. So let's say create uh, a user called Robert. Okay, and the email is robot at the rate email.com. Okay. Password is robot at the rate hash one two three. Okay. Now, now let's go to login page. Login via Zeno. Now I am not signing up. I am not signing up. The user already exists. I am just giving the valid username and password and seeing whether the person is able to log in or not. Okay, just log in. It has made a call to Zeno, authenticated the user, fetch the data, and then redirect the person to the dashboard page with the details of Robert, which we just created. So there are scenarios when you want the person to sign up and log in, but there could be scenarios when you just want them to log in. Okay, maybe the data got created from some other system or maybe from mobile app or some other platform which you may have. So you have a one central repository of the users where they can log in and sign up on any of the front end, uh, which is getting built to Trapport or through a mobile app or any other platform where all the data of the collections and all the data of users and everything is getting stored at Zeno. So this completes the login and sign up flow on Zeno.
होप यू एंजॉय द वीडियो सी यू अगेन इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो बाय बाय